we're targeting a technology that will produce solar cells, for example, that are as cost-effective as coal-fired electricity. On April 27, 2009, Secretary of Energy Stephen Chu announced the formation of 46 Energy Frontiers Research Centers to mobilize the enormous talents and skills of our nation's scientific workforce in pursuit of the breakthroughs that are essential to make alternative and renewable energy truly viable as large-scale replacements for fossil fuels. The University of Southern California was chosen as the site of the Center for Emerging Materials for Solar Energy Conversion and Solid-State Lighting. Professor P. Daniel Dapkis of the USC of the Turby School of Engineering will lead the effort, working with Professor of Chemistry Mark Thompson. Professor Dapkis, you're going to be working on both light-emitting diodes, illumination, and solar cells. What's the connection between these two seemingly very different things? The connection between the two is that uh, light emission and light absorption are inverse processes. And many of the same materials that are useful for making efficient solar cells are also uh, useful for making efficient light emitters. Both of those technology areas are important to uh, producing uh, low-cost renewable energy and the uh, uh, improvement of the usage of electrical energy as well. You know, and sort of to follow up on that, that, that really one of the principal goals of our center is to really develop uh, materials and look at different materials and architectural designs to try to optimize the efficiencies of those two devices. Because, as Dan said, they're reciprocal uh, functions, they're reciprocal, um, uh, what's the word? Processes. Processes, that's a good one. Um, as Dan said, those are really reciprocal processes, but... Um, generally, a very good LED is not a very good solar cell and vice versa. And so there's a lot of materials choices you make. And as you said, sometimes there's overlap and sometimes there isn't. So okay. we really want to try to look at a concerted effort at both of these families of devices. Okay. But the thing is, you're not going to be coming up with something, look, it's a solar cell. Look, it's a light bulb. If the idea is there are going to be two separate families that both come out of the same technology, correct? That's correct. But we have chosen to work on technological approaches which we think can impact the cost in the long term if you can make high-efficiency solar cells and light-emitting diodes out of these techno technological areas. Now, you, you have, this is a very interdisciplinary effort. Can you describe some of the skills that are necessary to um, get where you're trying to go? We have a range of people working within this EFRC, all in a very integrated way, ranging from uh, people doing wet chemistry at the bench all the way through to people making very sophisticated devices in, in a you know, clean room type of environment. So we go all the way from very sophisticated engineering to very sophisticated chemistries and everything in between. If everything went really, really well, where do you think you'll be in five years with this? Um, what kind of improvements, for example, in efficiency in either lighting or solar cells might you think about achieving? Well, we've set as our goal um, making, uh, at least demonstrating in the laboratory, uh, devices that will revolutionize, really, solar energy and solid-state lighting. And so we've set our, as our goal uh, solar cells that are as efficient as 50% and light-emitting diodes that rival any existing light emission technology. And the current maximum for solar cells is something like 40 percent, is that correct? That's correct. Uh, I think what, what is different about our approach is that we're using technologies that, or we're tr exploring technologies that are amenable to really low-cost implementation of cells that are that efficient. Current cells are highly optimized and very expensive and really only play a role in the uh, space uh, solar cell market where cost is l a less important issue. So if, um, I, I hate to put you on the spot, but if you were setting um, a goal for how much, how much more economical, what kind of cost savings might be realized on a percentage basis, what, what might that number be? Well, what we're tra targeting is, uh, rather than talk about percentage changes, is we're targeting a technology that will produce solar cells, for example, that are as cost-effective as coal-fired electricity. Hmm. Okay. That's going to be a really difficult challenge, but that's our goal. Okay. 
Um, Dr. Thompson, do you have anything to add? Um, no, I think that Dan did a pretty good job of covering what our targets are. And the key is that they're, they're as, as, as you can imagine, they're not easy targets. We intentionally chose very aggressive targets as, as our goals because we think that that's, that we don't think they're impossible targets, though. We think we can achieve those. And through the work we're doing in the center, we hope to develop the materials and systems that will help us get there. Mm -hmm. the, the, one of the issues that always is a problem, of course, is that you tie efficiency with cost. And that's a very important one, right? That, that is in the cost structure of solar cells. How expensive are they is part of the, the cost structure. What we hope is that we will be able to create technologies that can be uh, transferred to industrial partners who will then be able to develop those into real products. And a lot of that manufacturing development is what needs to come after, you know, the chicken, it's not really a chicken and egg. No. You don't want to put the cart before the horse. But, but we need to have the efficient cell before we can manufacture the efficient cell. But you're hoping that it'll be something that is commercializable. Well, absolutely. Yes, our sir. goal is to make these, is for our work to have an impact in society. Okay. If it never leaves the, the academe, it, it has, we have not been a success. Great. Thank you very much, both, both of you.